Welcome to the Textile Artists of Virginia, AKA Tava. Tava was established to support each member as a fiber artist in 2010. The mission statements that we explore the boundaries of the medium and to educate and increase public awareness of the art. What's in a word? Words are powerful, words can inspire, words are the window into the world. In recent years, textile artists of Virginia enthusiastically delved into the semantics of words, that is, their meanings, usage, cliches, and context. This exhibit presents each artist's conceptions of words and phrases as they explore the themes of neologism, over the top, as well as wordplay and pun. This exhibit is curated by Karen Toiba and myself and the members of Talbot. Neologisms represent the evolving nature of the English language and get added to English dictionaries at the rate of a thousand per year. Over time, people create newly coined terms, words, or phrases defining concepts or ideas that were previously expressed using other words or may not have existed at all. The members of Tava played with examples of neologisms that found their way into modern and not so modern day English language. Some examples are fiddlesticks, zipper, and FaceTime. Whosical by Melissa Barnhart. Now around the time Tava began to talk about neologisms, there was a Broadway hit called Susicals. The musical was taken from many of Dr. Zeus's children's books, and that gave Missy the idea for Whosical. There is a long running TV series featuring the time traveler, Dr. Who, and he is transported in a telephone booth called a TARDIS. Missy's granddaughter and many other fans follow his adventures. If there could be a Susical, why not a Whosical? Infantry by Laura Post. Infantries are where storks made their nest is a wonderful secret place where babies stay until taken to their new parents. It is not known who entered this word for the 2014 Washington Post Wordplay Masters Invitational Competition. The quilt is made using commercial printed cottons, batiks, and various yarns and fibers and stitching techniques. Over the top. The phrase over the top originated in World War I when it referred to troops in the trenches charging over the breastwork to attack the enemy. Nowadays, we use it for something that is going beyond what is expected, normal or appropriate from over the top of the mountain to surpassing a goal, winning in the Olympics, embellishing a surface, or watching a child place, Tava members explore different aspects of an often used phrase. Elephant in Silk Ties by Melissa Barnhart. Missy remembered the image of an elephant in a coloring book and combined that with the idea of using the silk ties in her stash. Her granddaughter, Gracie Opazo, sketched freehand the elephant on freezer paper and her mother drew the flirty eyelashes. This is a three generation rendering of a magnificent elephant. Cotton thread and fabric, silk ties and steam is seen fusible adhesive web. It is machine quilted and finished by Paula Golden. Dancing in the Rain by Sue Davis. When Sue's adolescent daughter was struggling with self-identity and finding her path in the world, Sue cross-stitched a frog in a tutu and the following words. Life is not waiting for the storm to pass. It is actually about learning to dance in the rain. Vivian Green. Sue had no idea what it meant to become a US Army officer. This quilt celebrates women in traditionally male roles who go over the top by dancing in the rain. Mama, we can still hear you. 
by Tina Freudenberger. Tina's rescued many donkeys. Rosalita and Lucy are so inquisitive and beautiful. Donkeys are affectionately known as long ears. And this quilt captures those long ears peeking over the top of a fence rail listening to Tina. These girls give Tina so much joy and love as do all of their animals. You could say their menagerie of 42 animals is also over the top. The quilt is raw edged applique using some hand dyed fabrics for the sky and landscape with free motion quilting. Over the top by Gwen Gopal. As majestic pelicans glide past our family beach house, Gwen's happy place, Gwen is reminded of the wonder of it all, counting her blessings for an over the top life. Machine applique, thread painting, embroidery, free motion quilting. Bell of the Ball by Paula Golden. The white linen tablecloth had seen much in its lifetime. Family reunions, wedding celebrations, christening feasts, family and friend dinners, Thanksgiving dinners, and at last, a funeral reception. Each gathering had left behind spots and holes scattered all over the top. No longer white and beautiful, the tablecloth found itself dropped off at the local thrift store. Paula gave it a new life with a rust bath, layered it with cotton batting, added thread and intricate embroidery to again let this linen tablecloth be the bell of the ball as it now watches life go by from its special place on the wall. Moonshine by Martha Mabry. Martha has always loved the ocean, the waves, sand, birds, and shells. When she learned the topic of the group's challenge, she began to visualize what the phrase could mean. Because this is her first art quilt using her own ideas and design, it was difficult to narrow down her focus. She settled on an old favorite, the ocean, and what a night is over the top of it. This piece is machine pieced and quilted. Up, up, over the top by Judy Madigan. Hawaii's Kilauea volcano, the most hazardous volcano in America, erupted on April 30th. 2018. This was a starting point for the volcano's month-long activities. It produced an enormous amount of lava that transformed the landscape and ultimately destroyed 700 homes. News of the violence of the nature drew me in. The lava flowing over the top was extremely hot and produced steam vents all the way down the volcano. Multiple pieces of black and gray material were fused to the background. Pieces of different colored tulle and free motion quilting define the steam. Over the Top by Deanne Mims. Inspired by the paintings of Marc Chagall, this quilt illustrates the emotions of love over the top in intensity. The quilt shows falling in love, the marriage ceremony, the creation of family and children. The negative powerful emotions from love are also portrayed. Unrequited love, divorce, death, and the ending of love. We use flowers in these times to express our response to these over-the-top emotions. This quilt makes use of the techniques of collage and thread painting. Free motion quilting surrounds the iconic images. Sundance by Carol Monty. The sunflower is over the top in a myriad of ways. From the sheer size of the flower and the vast number of individual parts to the amount of food it supplies to the vital honeybee, the sunflower is an amazing work of art and design. This quilt explores the complexity and intricate detail of each flower as it um, as well as serves as a reminder of the importance of the honeybee. The techniques of raw edge applique, 
hand dyed fabric, embroidery and free motion quilting are combined to represent this impressive flower. Over the top, SpaceX by Ann Panella. This strip piece quilt is built of half square triangles with color degradations that resulted in blocks that resemble colorful starbursts. Each block is accentuated by a quilting pattern that boosted the effect of exploding stars. What could be more over the top than the stars in space? This work provided many learning opportunities as well as interesting color combinations and bright visual appeal. Swinging Out Over the Top by Shirley Sellers. My tree swing hangs from a branch of a hickory tree, which is bright and golden in autumn. Swinging out as high as she can gives Shirley the exhilarating feeling of being flung out over the top of her world. Shirley's quilt is completed in raw edge technique with frayed edges in order to capture and reflect this feeling of freedom and over the top. Crazy for Embellishments by Kathy Siebebeck. Crazy quilts are an over the top assortments of fabric, embroidery and embellishments in a random design. To give Kathy's quilt some order, she used hexagon patterns from foolproof crazy quilting. Some fabrics and trims have sentimental value. The satin from Kathy's daughter's wedding gown, her grandmother's handkerchief, a swatch from her granddaughter's jacket. With silk ribbon flowers, she stitched her initials in three hexagons. Some embroidery and beading were inspired by stunning stitches for crazy quilts. Each hexagon is machine pieced. The remaining stitching and assembly is hand done. Glory's Garden by Gloria Smith. This is Gloria's first art quilt after 30 years as a traditional quilter. Her husband sa says that she is obsessed with quilting. If she is not actually piecing and quilting, then she is thinking about it. Gloria is also inspired by the beauty of nature and decided to create Glory's Garden using as many of her favorite techniques and materials as she could. This quilt makes her think of a warm sunny day and makes her happy. The background is hand dyed and painted by the artist. Cotton, wool, velvet, ribbon, variety of threads, machine and hand quilting and embellished with embroidery, beads and buttons. The Biggest House in the World by Karen Toiba. A little orange snail, unhappy about her tiny house, soon finds a way to enlarge and adorn and color it. She discovers too late that her big house prevents her move to the next cabbage plant. And sadly, she fades away and soon her majestic house crumbles. Many years later, a wise snail tells a story to a small purple snail to convince her that a compact, easy to carry shell might be better suited than the biggest house in the world for a life of adventure and exploration. Hand applique, free motion quilting and beading. Wordplay and puns. This portion of the exhibit is a collection of color altered fabrics created by each artist over the course of several years to set the stage for Wolf Play and Puns Vibrant Exhibit. Indigo dyed fiber, discharged pieces, fabrics dyed using various colorants as well as painted fabrics are fastened to each artist's unique interpretation of their word, phrase, or pun. Each quilt in this inaugural exhibit contains 50% of or more of fabrics altered by the artist. Brush Strokes, Fry Dye Night Lights by Arlene Blackburn. Under the bright lights on a crisp fall evening, the green manicured grass is slightly damp from a fresh watering earlier in the day. Tinged with excitement, 
the marching band takes the field in a well-practiced regimented formation, horns up, the star-spangled banner resonates through the air and sets the stage for all the drama about to unfold. Those lights piercing the night sky are a beacon inviting all to come and experience a classic moment of their youth. Fabrics hand dyed by the artist, raw edge cut, machine pieced, machine quilted, cotton fabrics, cotton and rayon threads, 80-20 cotton poly batting. Dying to escape COVID by Sue Davis. COVID is what is consuming us all these days. Sue began remembering when she lived in Hawaii and what a relaxed and seemingly carefree time that was. In her art quilt, the tropical flowers are battling the virus for dominance, just as her mental health is battling isolation. The flowers are hand painted on silk and hand applique to a cotton background that is a wax batik. The texture of the batik, COVID, is enhanced with free motion machine quilting. Aurora in the Night Dies by Tina Freudenberger. Last year, Tina and a friend began experimenting with ice dyeing. When Taba members challenge each other to incorporate their own dyed fabric, she wanted to ice dye the fabric and build an Aurora Borealis piece. After many tries, she was able to create a sky that reminded her of the Aurora. Tina tends to do quilts with animals, so she added a polar bear to the scene. All fabrics were either ice dyed or submersion dyed by hand using fiber reactive dyes. Raw edge applique and machine quilted with various threads. Dynamite by Gwyn Gopal. Some waves simply explode like the mighty force of dynamite. As an artist, Gwyn cannot find a better way to spend her time in addition to being with family than expressing herself through improvisational art quilting. Living on the beach provides a constant and changing inspiration for Gwyn's work. Dynamite is sun dyed with coins and couscous, painted with cedar color, ink intense pencils and acrylic paint, quilted with cotton, polyester, BC swap and metallic threads and embellished with love. Died Dead and Gone by Paula Golden. Inspired by the lyrics, And When I Die from her youth, which was recorded by Blood, Sweat and Tears, songwriter Laura Nero. The catchy melody of this song belied the seriousness of the lyrics, but offers hope for the future for humanity in the chorus. And when I die, and when I'm gone, there'll be one child born in this world to carry on, to carry on. The fabrics were created from rust dyeing on linen and sackcloth and waterless lithography using oil printing ink. Dyed on the Vine by Judy Madigan. This is a world play on dye on the vine. Venturing out on my daily hikes, Judy sees multiple trees with vines in all growing stages. She decided to create the entire background so it looked like the bark of a tree trunk. This involved dyeing cotton material in shades of black, gray, and white with Dynaflow paints. After cutting different lengths and adding small amount of commercial fabrics, Judy fused everything to a black background. The base is heavily free motion quilted. A cord was attached for the vine and multiple leaves dyed with Dynaflow paints were fused to the surface. The piece was finished with free motion quilting. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by Deanne Mims. The title is a pun from a Beatles song indicating LSD, a 60s recreational drug created in scientific labs to explore mental states. Ingestion produced trips that could lead to horrific experiences or religious transcendence. Banned in the 60s due to numerous 
instances of harmful effects. The drug has been restudied in recent years and scientists use LSD in the treatment of mental disorders and terminal illness. Indigo dyeing transform tied fabrics. Straight line quilting directs the eye movements from the bottom to the top in transcendence, evoking the way one experiences a world under the influence of LSD. A nice dye by Carol Monty, a play on nice try and ice dye. This quote was inspired by the beautiful textures created using the ice dyeing technique. In Carol's shady Florida garden, she drew, grew caladiums, a warm season bulb, and their color and patterns were the basis for the design. Made from 100% hand dyed fabrics using raw edge applique, acid reactive dyes in both powered and liquid form were used to create the vibrant colors. Live Free or Die by Anne Panella. Live Free or Die is a play on the New Hampshire state motto, Live Free or Die. The title appealed to Anne's libertarian mindset. She chose to depict a flaming torch, the symbolic guiding light in many contexts, including liberty, resistance, hope, knowledge, regeneration, and continuity. The complete quote, live free or die, death is not the greatest of evils, originated with a revolutionary war hero in 1809. The flames are made with dupioni silk, colored with alcohol ink, and the dark background is cotton, treated with Dynaflow liquid colors. The torch, border, and binding are unaltered quilting cottons. Diverse marine life. In an attempt to illustrate the diversity of life, Laura Post tried to use as many different fibers and techniques as possible. On a painted and stenciled background, Laura dyed a variety of embellishments, including Osnaburg, organdy, organza, cheesecloth, Evalon, Tyvek, baby wipes, color catchers, echo felt, silk ribbon, wool roving, pearl cottons, and many different yarns. It is hand stitched and machine quilted. Beauty is in the Dye of the Beholder by Gloria Smith. This quilt is an experiment in, pro in improvisational quilting. Gloria allowed herself to play, which is hard for a traditional quilter. Improvisational log cabin blocks, her favorite traditional block, were the start of this quilt. The designs created with gelatin plate printed fabric allowed for some creative quilting. Indigo dyed fabric, gelatin plate printed fabric, commercial cottons, machine, and hand quilted. Seize the dye by Karen Toiba, a double wordplay on Seize the Day. The wood post of an old pier is overgrown with plants and corals, providing a sheltered area for various fish and ocean creatures. Sunlight seeps down to the sandy ocean floor from the water surface. Coral reefs are very effective for reducing damage coming from the ocean. They absorb wave energy and protect ecosystems located between the reefs and the coasts. For example, seagrass beds and lagoons, thereby contributing to environmental protection through the reduction of coastal erosion. Discharge stamping, model printing, gel printing, Dynaflow and indigo dyeing. No commercial fabrics were used. Beads, yarn, hand applique and free motion quilting. We hope that you've enjoyed the exploration of what's in a word by the members of the Textile Artists of Virginia. Our website is www.textileartva.wixsite.com. We are open to all who are interested in exploring fiber art. Thank you for coming. <laughs>